get started because it is after seven. Um, so I want to, to welcome Sue Beck, who is interested in joining us. And so she's um, coming to, I'm just going to see who this is. Okay. Um, so she's coming to kind of check us out and we hope that she'll like what she sees. But maybe we could just all kind of introduce ourselves so that, because I know Chris may not know everybody also. Um, so I'm Carolyn, I'm Carolyn Bodum, I'm the chair. And Mimi, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Mimi Graney. I'm the town's new economic vitality manager. So uh, I'm working out of the town manager's office. I only started in April, so I'm still very new. Um, so I think this is maybe only my second meeting with the group. Okay. And Jen, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Sue. My name's Jennifer Hurley Wales. Um, I think I'm in the middle of uh, maybe beginning my third year. Um, with the committee and um yeah i work on the porch fest project and a new project poetry phone which we'll talk about great, great. and chris i'm uh chris randall and um was working <clears throat> with margot kimball of um in, in, with some art for all um, um publicity and one thing led to another. So when she stepped down from the committee, she um, asked if I'd be interested. And so I um, lived in West Concord for 26 years now with uh, my wife and two girls who um, kind of flown the coop. Um, but um, yeah, so that's that's me. And I think I will be working um, assisting with porch fast as I, as needed and um, doing it's um the brochure revision um which we'll talk about later great and helene do you want to just introduce yourself oh you're muted carolyn you can control that oh uh, mutes you have the power okay i'm actually not the host i think mimi's got the power yeah <laughs> I, i'm not able to uh unmute helene i can ask her to unmute but she's Okay, she does. Am I am I unmuted now? Yes. Okay, good. I'm good. <laughs> um, I'm Helene Clayton. I am completing my first year with the committee. It's been a learning experience. I'm going to be helping out with Porch Fest as well this year, um, and I'm proposing a new project that we'll talk about tonight. And and I think that's Sue. <laughs> the other Sue, Sue Latance. Hi, I'm sorry I was late to joining. I had trouble finding the Zoom link. <laughs> oh, okay. I know it was on the agenda. <laughs> um, so um, I'm assuming just a general introduction in terms of. Sure, we're, we're just we're just because there's some new people, including yeah. you, we're just kind of introducing ourselves. Absolutely. So um, Sula Chance, I've um, been a resident of Concord um, recently for 12 years, and then about 20 years ago for um, a couple of years before that. Um, and um, I am uh, fairly well acquainted with Kate Yoder and uh, Margot Kimball, who are rolling, who have rolled off, um, and found out about the um, organization this way. Um, and very excited to participate. Um, have lots of crazy ideas, <laughs> so bear with me with those sorts of things. Um, but also willing to be a very helping hands wherever it's needed. Wonderful, great. And so I so have you had a chance to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Sue Beck. I lived um, I lived in West Concord for nine years, and then from '98 till now, we I lived out Minis out uh, on Silver Hill, way out almost to Carlisle. And my husband passed away a few years ago, so I decided to downsize and um, wound up in this lovely neighborhood on Prairie Street and thought this would be a good way to get to know the folks in West Concord. I've been traveling a lot the last few years before my husband passed away, so I had lost touch a little bit with Concord, but now I'm back and I'd really, I went to Porch Fest in September. I thought it was so great. Um, my experience is mostly musical. My husband and I directed about 25 shows at First Parish in Concord. Oh, I'm in the Concord Women's Chorus. 
Um, I can type, I can write grants, and I'm willing to do whatever needs to be done if I take this on. So wonderful. Great. Great. So um, so Chris and Sue. So Chris has actually been sworn in this afternoon, and we are grateful to him for that because we asked him if he could do that for us so that we would have a quorum. So we are really appreciative that you took the time to do that. And I believe Sue is going to be appointed by the selectmen soon, and then soon you'll be sworn in. And then if Sue Beck chooses to join us, then we'll have a full complement of, of members, and that will be fantastic. Um, okay, so I think we've we've actually welcomed our new members. So welcome everybody. Um, and we can't actually approve the minutes because Ed Feather, who is the other member of the committee, and is the uh, the clerk, he will need to get us his minutes for last April's meeting, um, for our next meeting. So we'll we'll just skip over that. Um. So next on the agenda is the MCC, and that's the uh, Massachusetts Cultural Council Festivals and Projects Grant Opportunity, which I had sent a link to everybody. Um, it's a small grant, it's $2,500, and it that's both the maximum and the minimum. All the grants are $2,500, and it's generally for a sort of an event. Um, so unfortunately, the the due date for it is Thursday. So, you know, if somebody had a chance to look at it and has a fabulous idea, I'm happy to try to, you know, put a grant application together. But, um, you know, I had really just sent it as an opportunity. If does anyone have an idea that you would like us to to propose to them, or should we just let this one go? Does this generally come up every year around the same time, or should we anticipate that for next year? I think I think it may. Um, the grant did, actually didn't come out until after the last meeting, so it didn't come out until late April. But I think that it has come up in the past. Mimi, do you know, is this something that happens every year? Yeah, it is, it's an annual grant, um, and it's relatively easy to get compared to other MCC grants. Um, and uh, it's really their effort to kind of support um, kind of small, especially smaller scale events. Um, so it, it's the kind of thing that if Porch Fest needed more funding, um, you could go for. You can kind of double dip uh, with this type of grant, too. Okay. You know, um, one of the things I know Margot and I have talked about and she may have spoken to you chris about this is doing establishing an open mic night in west concord and strikes me as this would be great for it it's just that we would need someone i don't really right now have bandwidth for it but um it would be maybe an ideal thing for that but we could also <laughs> wait until we're really ready okay do you know so how it, it sounds as if we'll keep it on our radar oh go ahead chris do you know how onerous it, a grant application it is? Some are easier than others. Um, Mimi says easy to get, but um, you know, is it easy to fill out as as well? It's or my understanding it's easy to fill out too. It's an online application, um, and it's pretty straightforward questions. Um, if if you've got an idea, it might be worth just putting your putting it out there, um, uh, even if it's maybe. Uh, the idea is not completely baked together. Um, I think they're kind of used to like recognizing this sort of an opportunistic type of grant. Yeah, yeah. And, and is the town process, does is there a sign off needed by the town manager or by you or, you know, I, I know it's in the booklet I got today, but I haven't read the booklet yet. Um, so again, uh, is it um can one person just kind of do it and run with it um i'd have to double check for that i know for sure that the town has to officially receive the grant so if you were approved for the grant they would have to do a vote to say yes we accept that money so i think that's the the bigger challenge um so i i think there's um in terms of like if we uh if you were to apply for it maybe not 
dotting the I's and crossing the T's, especially if this committee is saying like, we want you to go for it. Um, I had I had let folks in West Concord and some of the other arts groups in Concord know about it. So it's not like, um, you know, we've got secret information um, that we're taking an opportunity from anybody else. And, and is it only one per town? Um, I don't know about that for sure. Um, I don't know of anybody in Concord that ha has applied. Okay. The reason I'm asking is Sue mentioned having some ideas. I jotted oh. down some brainstormed ideas and I'm not sure what the process would be if, if you know, if it's kind of just free money dangling out there or whether it's a committee decision. So I think what we would do is if Sue ha had a, or anybody else had an idea, we would decide if the committee wanted to go for it and then um, we would just apply for it. Does anyone have an idea that they think would, you know, work for $2,500? Well, I'll just, one of the ideas in, in just understanding the cultural committee um, purpose, uh, which is to kind of draw people to West Concord and, um, uh, you know, I was thinking of events, things that would draw people here and, you know, one of the great family events that um, my kids loved was Touch a Truck Day. <laughs> and, you know, I have no idea what it means to organize a Touch a Truck Day, or even if that's possible, but the industrial history, you know, you can get a fire truck, a police car, um, some farm equipment, you know. So anyway, that was, you know, again, I'm, it's brainstorm because this may totally not be our thing, but I'm just thinking that's a family event, and mm -hmm. and um, and it'd be nice to get families to come, and then they could, you know, eat at the restaurants, and who who knows what else we could organize around that. But um, there's a well, there's one idea. Mm -hmm. And mine are a little more. My crazy ideas are a little more complicated, <laughs> and probably okay. not necessarily doable, but. Um, so um, one is, and, and again, it's most because I don't understand like how property and stuff is used in the downtown area of West Concord, but that big open space that has nothing there, whose property is that? Is that town property? Can we use that for things, events? Are you talking? Kind of, yeah, what, what are you referring to? Which property? It's kind of right outside of Neshoba Brook Bakery and across right. from. Yeah. That that's owned. That's, yeah, that's owned by someone. That's not just open land. Not public. I, okay. I, it's not public as far as I know. I'm I believe it's owned by the people who built Brookside, isn't it? I oh. think so. Right. Mm -hmm. Carolyn. From me, what was your idea? Well, it just might be worth like um seeing maybe if we could partner at some point with Brookside, you know, if they're not using the it's unfortunate that that's like a beautiful town gathering space and you could do farmer's market or I don't know. It just seems like there's lots of different things you could use that space for. And it's just not like on a beautiful summer day. Um, so um, that was one. And the other one was a little bit um, <laughs> um, maybe a little um, not cynical, but I think uh, there are a lot of people, I'm a cyclist, and so I use that, our main street for riding my bike, or whatever, and it's kind of a disaster, to be honest with you, <laughs> so, <laughs> and so he kept saying, oh, now, now they put the, like, sewer lines or whatever, then they'll pave it, or they haven't paved it yet, so I thought it would be, again, here's my, and it's a crazy idea, but it would be fun if the, if the town were able to, like, shut that down some summer evening, and just let people, like, take colored chalk, and, like, do fun things, around the potholes whatever and then it just washes away and it's gone so it's ephemeral art um <laughs> but anyway just silly things like that so that again that's way out there probably the police would absolutely hate it and would cause traffic jams etc but anyway it just well, I, think it's, I, think I think it's a great interesting fun idea <laughs> decorate um, the yeah that's hilarious it is yeah. well it's hilarious that's right it's hilarious it's kind of making fun of something that's somewhat tragic for some of us <laughs> right um, actually yeah but I think what what I love about West Concord is it's kind of quirky and so I think like 
doing things that feel sort of quirky that aren't like the st standard things are are mm -hmm. would be kind of a fun thing to promote so yeah okay um, don't worry all my ideas aren't like way off the rails like that one but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know that that's what brainstorming is all about is just mm -hmm. putting together fabulous ideas and then working on them together so um so can you in use, terms of can this you use trip, the playground for anything like that, like the, use the playground for a touch a truck day or something. Oh, right out. Yeah. 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 Because I think the last time I went to a touch a truck, it was at on Hunt Gym. Hmm. Oh, hmm. They had one. So that that's a place you could use, couldn't you? Mm hmm. Hmm. Um, so the difficulty with this grant is it has to be in by Thursday. Yeah. So we'd have to. So I, I guess the question, I, the question is, is there an idea that we could reasonably put together in a day or two? Um, I mean, I think the the touch a truck is a really interesting idea. I'm not sure how we would, you know, uh, put it together just in a day. Um, yeah. If somebody is willing to to take that on, I'm more than happy to work with them on getting the grant in. Would it would it qualify for Mass Cultural Council as a cultural event? I think that's another question. I'm not sure. What about adding it to the poetry um, project or, or one of the ones we're going to discuss tonight? You mean adding the touch of truck to the poetry project? No, oh. whether there's a piece of each of the projects yeah. we're going to discuss that could mm -hmm. be broken off and um, get its own funding for 2,500. Yeah. Well, so on the poetry project, actually, I was just so in another mindset about it, but you know, we're drafting the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail proposal for that this week. Um, we didn't have that going for that MCC grant would be kind of ideal, but I don't think we need both. Um, and, and we, we really need Bruce Freeman rail trail because we need them to grant us the location on the trail. Okay. So, so we maybe hold off for right now on the festival and projects grant, and, but then if throughout the meeting an idea comes up, then we can pursue it. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, so next on the agenda is the MCC grant update. And for you know uh, the new people, just to briefly explain, most of our funding, um, in fact, all of our funding last year came from an annual non-competitive grant that we get from the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Last year, or actually this year, we got $15,000. The difficulty is that they don't, we can't apply for the grant until late fall, and then we don't get the grant until the spring. And so, um, and we have to have all the paperwork for the invoices and purchase orders and things in by June 30th. So it's always a little bit of a scramble. And so that's kind of where we are is we're we're scrambling to get this this grants finished, you know, the paperwork finished for this. However, um, this is also a good time this summer to start thinking about proposals for the upcoming grant. But um, Mimi, do you want to sort of fill us in on where we are on finishing up this year's grant? Yeah, I met with the finance office and um, the town completed the paperwork with the MCC sort of requesting the funds and sort of basically signed the grant agreement to get the money. Um, and then it so sounds like the MCC lost the paperwork. So we haven't actually received the money yet. Um, and so uh, I've got a meeting with them on Thursday to basically figure out when can we expect the cash because they have been giving out a lot of grants over the last year or so uh, because they have all that COVID relief money that they gave to artists. They're rather overwhelmed. Um, 
so hoping to process that because one of the challenges we have is any of the invoices that we've already received for this year, we can't pay until we have the money in. And similarly, the purchase orders that we want to put in to encumber the funds for some of the projects that um, are, we want to put towards that 15000 from the current fiscal year that might be going on through the summer, that the finance office is saying they won't let us put that paperwork in until we have the cash on hand to show that we can go against it. Um, so um, again, my plan is to meet with the MCC, look at how fast we can get that cash in because we have until the end of the month. And then with the different folks that are doing purchase orders, um, I know I, I think I owe you, Jennifer, an email and with Ed. Um, so there's a, a couple different ones that are in process. So we wanna make sure all that paperwork. So I've talked to the finance folks to make sure they're ready to receive it as, as soon as everything kind of comes through. Okay, so, so you'll be in touch with people and we'll, We'll get that going. Yes. Great. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to let us know about the grant? Uh, no, I think just the folks that have got the uh, the purchase orders, I'll check in with them on offline about what they need to do to get their paperwork. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I did um, attend a call uh, with the MCC a couple of weeks ago, and they say that they anticipate that this year's grant will actually be $15,000 again. So, which would be awfully nice. So, you know, as we're looking, as we're thinking about all these great proposals that people are having, um, you know, we can be thinking about which of those, possibly even all of them, we would like to put in for next year's grant. So just to let you know that that's what they let us know. And Mimi again, would you like to talk about the, the MCC training information on DEI? Yes, um, NIFA, which is the New England Foundation for the Arts and the Mass Cultural Council, um, and this other uh, group, I believe it's called Art Connect International, have a program um, to basically help support diversity, equity, and inclusion, especially among the arts community. So they have a couple different tracks for their program, uh, one for artists and one for folks who are commissioning art or like ourselves sort of uh, uh, facilitating cultural districts, uh, commissioning artists, creating opportunities for artists. Um, and so the training is online um, and they uh, it's kind of set at your own pace. Um, I believe it's might be 12 weeks altogether, but again, you can kind of set it at your own pace. So it's uh, basically like a series of online videos and then you have a, a an affinity group that you self-schedule yourselves to, um, to um, meet with and almost like a little support group of, um, I did this, the training with them last year and it was, it's really good. Um, and it's really set up for folks who are interested in the arts. So for example, they'll um, uh, have different conversations with different artists of color. They'll have uh, folks sort of uh, highlighting particular artists um, and how their work is their, um, uh, cultural values represented in their work, the um, individual cohort, you can kind of really kind of dig into questions about uh, internalized racism and um, and class and ableism and and really kind of uh, the issues that are, you know, that we're all kind of dealing with to look at how to have a more diverse community. So it's highly recommended. Um, the NIFA is picking up the cost for it, so it doesn't cost anything to participate. Um, uh, the folks from NIFA have specifically asked us if the West Concord Cultural District wants to be one of their uh, publicity partners. So basically to, to sign on and say, we think this is a, a program that uh, we wanna encourage people to participate in so that then the West Concord Cultural District's logo would be on the materials and we would basically kind of put it out to the networks of the arts community here in, in Concord. Um, and they're basically sort of uh, looking for a demonstration of, of uh, who's with them in terms of uh, signing on for this type of work. Um, so it's a pretty low lift in terms of like work we have to do is more just like pass it around to the, the folks we know. Um, and I, I know that like, for example, here in Concord, we've got through um, the travel and tourism office, like a list of all the cultural organizations. So it'd be pretty easy to get the email out to everybody. Um, but the question is a little bit about whether um, this cultural district would be interested in being an official um, uh, kind of sponsor to help get the word out about the program. 
Does anybody have any thoughts about whether you would like us to be an official sponsor of it? It sounds like it's a um, a worthwhile role for us. I would wonder too about um, a lot of organizations have been doing the DEI training. So do we know, have we taken sort of in any census yet to see um, what the interest is in town? Like who, you know, who is looking for this or who hasn't done it, you know, in the last year or so? I don't believe that many people have been taking part. I think it was maybe like 60 and that was statewide um, uh -huh. in the last group. So there's a lot of folks who are um, who doing not. this. Who haven't, yeah. Okay. Any so other? Our, can you just clarify? So for our role, it would be both, um, in promoting it to the arts organizations, arts nonprofits, arts and yeah museums or just it's any cultural organization um and in some ways it's almost like they don't have like an expectation of like how many emails we have to send or anything it's, it's more just kind of lending our our name um and th this existing email list that the town could we could kind of just put it on through the town's communication channels if this group says that they want us to pass the word so in other words Mimi, if the if the committee was interested in doing this, would you be able to just send it out to the the email list? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really about does this group feel okay about using the West Concord Cultural District logo um, and sort of being an official sponsor? And I could then get back to them and say yes, we will. Um, and then the the work is you know we can do it through the communications office here in town hall. Does anyone else have other thoughts on? Um, whether you'd like to do this? Is there any so, potential downside to being a sponsor? Mimi, is there a downside that you can think of? Um, you know, maybe if folks feel like it's not a worthwhile program, um, I can attest that I, I attended and I thought it was really good. Um, and this, they've been doing it for about a year. They've been, this is maybe like the third cycle of it. Um, so it's it's a kind of tried and true program. It's not one that's kind of had any controversies or technical problems or political problems or things like that. And would we be the only sponsor or are there other sponsors? Um, for this? They're reaching out to lots of different organizations. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how many. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the fact that you've done it and that you felt like it was a really good program and worthwhile says a lot. I would be comfortable endorsing it. I think it sounds like an important thing to do. And particularly because you've done it, you know. Yeah. So other other people who are members of the committee, so that would be Helene and Chris, who are officially on the committee at this point. How how do you two feel about it? You know, if there's no downside to it, and potentially there's other people that are going to be endorsing it, we're not going to be the only ones. I, I don't see any downside to it, so I, I guess I would be in favor of it. Chris, how do you feel? I think uh, I agree with Helene. Uh, um, it, um, so I would support that. Okay, and I, I'll support it. So I think that all the all the members support it unanimously. So, so Mimi, if you want to just go ahead and do what you need to do. All right, we'll do. And I'll okay. CC you, Carolyn, so you're in the loop. Super. Okay. Um, so on May 20th, we had the unveiling of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail mural, which was actually paid for partially through this year's MCC grant. Um, I wasn't able to attend. Was anyone able to attend who would like to just let us know how that, Chris, how did it go? It was fabulous. Um, it needs to be pointed out that um, Saturday, the original unveiling date was rained out. Um, and so they bumped it to Sunday and a lot of people, Margo, I, it was one telling me, was very worried about, uh, you know, how many people would show up. And 
it was a great gathering. Um, I would estimate there were like 125 people, 100, 125. Um, and um, I think it was Ed who spoke really eloquently. Margo spoke. Mike, uh, Mike uh, Sprague. Mike, Mike, thank you. Um, Jennifer was there too. Oh. Um, and um, he gave a wonderful overview of how it all came to be and, and uh, pointed out certain of its features. Um, Margo had a great introduction and um, thanked a lot of people who were involved and um, this really set the stage. Uh, Simon Cattell, though, was there and um, um, spoke to kind of the broader significance of, of this sort of thing and, and the trail itself. And, um, uh, and, and uh, so it was a very supportive crowd, um, mixed ages, um, kids all the way up through, you know, people in wheelchairs. So it, um, uh, it was a beautiful sunny day and there was cake <laughs> and there the was cake music. Cake. There was music too. We had a wonderful uh, singer uh, supported by a, a keyboard player. So it was a very festive um, uh, event. And people who were riding by on the trail, they'd stop and, and look at what was going on. So, you know, I, um, I thought it was a huge success. Wonderful. Jen, did you want to add anything? No, I think Chris described it perfectly. It was it was just very fun, very happy. Um, and if you haven't seen the mural, it is an incredible mural. Mm -hmm. It really, it's so cool. And the story behind it and each town and how the artists treated each town and the the border with the native species um, paintings and the historical insets. It's really, and it's a very, um, very inclusive depiction of the towns and the um, community and the participants, which was um, good to see. Great. Super. Okay. Um, so summer meeting dates, you know, we usually meet on the first Tuesday. The first Tuesday in July is July 4th. So what the town has us not meeting in July and meeting um, not next on August 1st. So my question to you is, would you like to do that? Would you like to skip July and meet August 1st? And if so, you know, will that work with everyone's vacation schedules? Or would you like to find, you know, a, a July meeting date and an August meeting date? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think some of it depends on the people who are doing, you know, like Chris working on the brochure and um, Jen working on Porch That's Fest great. and the poetry. Right. If you feel that you need two summer meetings for your projects or if if the group feels that they could could do with one and if August 1st will work. So what's feeling? August 1st works for me, it's fine. Well, Carolyn, I think one of the questions that we'll talk about um, is, is um, how a brochure revision gets done um, and um, the role of the committee and the nature of the working group. So um, I think you're right. I I am feeling that um, it would be good to um, make progress on that. Um, okay. And if we have to do it as a full committee, which I hope we don't, um, that we can you know work offline, kind of the way Porchfest works. Um, then um, I'd be fine with an October, I mean, October, <laughs> um, an August 1st um, uh, meeting. Okay. Jen, how do you feel? Yeah, I, I agree. You know, um, Porch Fest is meeting um, biweekly and we will just keep doing that. So I think meeting August 1st is fine. Okay. And skipping July. Um, and uh, I think also for the poetry phone that that would be, Okay, too. Okay. Mimi, how do you feel? Do you feel like you need a July meeting? No, I'm, I, I think uh, just the, the only thing that's kind of imminent is the con 
uh, a contract, but that all has to be done by the end of June. So I okay. think I'm all set for July. Okay. And um, Sue, do you, do you feel that you would like us to meet in July or would, would August 1st be okay? And does August 1st work for you? August 1st works for me. Yeah, I'd be okay. Skip. I mean, I'm not involved in things yet, so I don't feel like yeah. I should weigh in so much, but August 1st is fine. Okay. And Sue Beck, um, if you join us, will, will it August 1st work for you? Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. So let's, let's skip July and we will next meet on August 1st. Okay. So now we get into the fun stuff, which is our projects. And let's start with Chris and the brochure. Um, well, great. I, thanks. I um, think that a revision is always an opportunity to reflect on, you know, how well it's been working and uh, how it might be improved. Uh, and it, while it's always tempting to dive into the details, um, I, I want to back out a little and sort of I have two basic questions. And one is the process, which I mentioned the role of the committee being one question and then what a working group might be or might look like, um, or, or whether I just you know do it on my own, which is certainly an option too. Um, but, uh, and then the, the second kind of discussion is about the product itself, the brochure. And again, a, a revision is a wonderful opportunity to just you know, reaffirm the purpose and to uh, ask, you know, how can a brochure help achieve the goals of that and those purposes? So, you know, I know we have something. So um, I realize what I'm saying is almost like starting back at <laughs> square zero, uh, but in a way, it, it's not because, I mean, some of those conversations can be short and that, you know, but I do think those, to me anyway, um, the way I think those are important questions to answer and make sure that we feel um, really good about what it is we're producing so that we can get the result we want and that we're, our money is well spent. So, and time is well spent as well. And that we further the goal of enhancing the businesses uh, uh, and uh, enhancing West Concord as a um, destination. Um, so, you know, that's my preamble. <laughs> um, and if, maybe we just take a, a moment and, and tease some of that apart. Um, in terms of process, Carolyn, can you um, uh, talk about what you see the role of the committee as being and, and what a, um, a working group might be? Um, so I think it really depends on what you think would work best. Uh, you know, in the past, what's happened is one person has sort of taken it on and worked on it and reported back. Mm -hmm. But what's happened is it's turned out to be, I think, too much for one person. So I don't know that that's worked really well. Um, so I would say what, what process do you think would work for, for you? Um, related to that question is, um, you know, I, I'm, I want to be sensitive to Ed and the other people who put a lot of time and effort and thought mm -hmm. in, into this. So, you know, um, even if I had different ideas, I, I'd want to go slowly so that, um, you know, I, I learn what has already been talked through. And, um, you know, so to answer your question about what would work, I, I feel like there's kind of a, a checking in with Ed maybe or, or other okay. people who worked on it phase. Um, and, um, you know, um, is, uh, and and I I think um, initially, um, you know I, I feel comfortable about you know maybe outlining you know sort of 
what we've got and what mm -hmm. where we might change it, you know, and, and give a little um, send something around ahead of time and and um, um, talk it through as as a group. Um, so I think, and, and so I am only thinking kind of like phase one <laughs> and, mm -hmm. in answer to your question, you know, that's something that I think I, I could do uh, if I'm allowed to work with Ed. I don't, don't yeah. know kind of how the committee structure and quorums and public meeting rules um, apply, but um, um, that was my initial thought. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, uh, go ahead, Jen. I just I do have a question. What is the purpose of the brochure? Mm -hmm. I I'm not can yeah. I just I've never had a clear sense of who it's serving and if anyone is looking for this. You know, you know what? Who's the audience? Why have a brochure, particularly in this age of? people using less paper and is if it's about telling people where what's in West Concord is are there other ways to tell that story that are more in keeping with how people look for information okay I think that's that's great that really dovetails with some of the thinking I've been doing and um you know, one idea is taking a page out of um, some of the museums I've been to, <clears throat> um, you know, over the last few years, they have these phone tours. So, so your brochure, yeah, I mean, so you, you either dial up a number or log into a, a website and lo and behold, you, <laughs> you get a lot of information and, uh, and you can make treasure hunts and you can mix and match the kinds of things. So, you know, you could have a, um, brochure on your phone in a way. Now, maybe this is a whole different project. Um, I, that is one of the ones I would like to bring to the committee at some point, because I love okay. this idea of a, uh, a phone tour. Um, but I think Jen's question is really important, which is um, who's the audience um, for, for this and, um, you know, and Chris, just to build on that a little bit, I can tell you, having sat through some of those conversations, one of the things that happens is that the businesses change so much. And so you've got this, you know, fixed text that you can't change. And um, and then so quickly the brochure can feel, you know, um, out of out of date and so i love your idea of, of some i think it needs technology i think we're all mm -hmm. trained to look for not everyone likes this i realize but um something that's more current and instant with um qr code or f phone number or i think qr codes seem to be the more ubiquitous thing now and it's super easy and to your point because it's digital you can update it if things change along the way so and then what i you know the other half of it that we had many conversations about is then going to a website that needs to be supported and who's keeping that up to date you know um but that that i think is maybe more solvable than um the not mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, the moves I, um, one of the suggestions I was going to make is is not to include businesses. You know, include business districts and and um, <clears throat> it, the brochure actually has a wonderful list of kind of overarching restaurants and flower stores and art galleries, and you can. You know, if you were going to go the brochure route, you, you want to um, really enhance the um, uh, experience of coming. You you want to kind of make it into an activity because I was reflecting my own experience and behavior when I go to West Concord. I don't go to West Concord to, um, you know, have a cultural experience. I go there because I need, you know, something and and. So 
the brochure or whatever has to give people a reason to to come and then build it out like a, a mural um, treasure hunt. You know, mm -hmm. now we've got something that can draw people. Um, for, uh, you know, a progressive dinner. You know, you know, from appetizers through dessert, you go through all the different you know ice creams. Or in other words, you need to kind of think in in terms of what the family experience could be, and then dangle a few things out there and and um, and make West Concord a destination. It's like, oh, well, let's go, let's go do a progressive dinner at uh, you know meal mm -hmm. at, in West Concord versus a static descriptor of, mm -hmm. you know, here's what you'll see. Well, that's not really sexy, you know, it mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't pull people in um, the way that, you know, if you float a few ideas. Uh, whether I, that's on paper or whether that's digital, I don't know, but right. it's the only thing I wonder, I, I think that sounds awesome because I think that is what this committee, you know, makes sense that we put together this guide about cultural um, assets of West Concord. It was very, but there seemed to be, and this would be something to look into maybe through Margo and Ed, there seemed to be a huge emphasis on for the promoting the businesses. And I think as part of whether that's a stronger part of the charter of this committee than it's stronger than I had realized that um, to supporting the local businesses was something that people felt pressure to deliver on. So yeah, one, meaning, one, yeah. one idea I was thinking as you were saying, um, Rich, uh, Chris, was um, an illustrated map um, so I used to live in Somerville and somebody recently show, shared like actually an old illustrated map that had like little icons for the different businesses. Um, and so it was like kind of a, a cool piece of art. Um, and because it was an old one, it was like, oh, I remember when, you know, uh, uh, Brennan's insurance used to be there. So in some ways it was like a historic artifact of like these old things that used to be there and recognizing how things had changed. So it, it kind of worked. I think some of those illustrated ones, it kind of works like a brochure, but it's like a, a cool piece of art. It also helps with wayfinding and recognizing it's not meant to kind of uh, be up to date all the time. Cause as you know, you know like um, Jennifer said, the businesses keep changing. Um, and especially if some of them um, more than focusing on the business itself, like the icons are looking at the architecture. Um, because as somebody who's new to the community, I'm discovering that there's all these like little hidden corners of West Concord I didn't recognize existed. So a, a map might help um, uh, do that. And if it was, you know, it, it's potentially something that we could commission an artist to do and that might highlight some of the cultural assets, might highlight some of the businesses, create something kind of um, visually interesting. Um, so that's one idea that kind of riffing on what you suggested. Helene or Sue or Sue, any any other thoughts? Oh, I kind of agree with Jen, um, you know, in terms of how much energy should we put into a printed brochure at this point, particularly with, you know, things changing, you know, businesses changing, all of that sort of thing. Um, and I, I did think that Ed was working on the website, the town website portion of it, which I think would cover what we need covered um, without actually having a physical printed brochure. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, is, what is Ed working on exactly? Because I last I heard it was going to be like a series of photographs that he's working with Beth for of that's businesses. Different. Do you remember Carolyn? Oh, that's yeah. different. Okay. So, different. Yeah, it, so yeah, it is a, a little different. So the, the Visit Concord website, which is the um, you know, the, the visitor center website, Ed is working with, I think, 40 different businesses so that they each can have their own little page. Um, so th that's what Ed is working on. And, and also just sort of improving the West Concord page of that website, just in general. But I think that it could certainly tie into whatever 
Chris is working on. I mean, I think it would have to. I think it makes would make a lot of sense for the the two of them to tie in together. Great. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Any any other thoughts for Chris? I'll, I'll just share one little thing with you. Um, sure. The Concord Women's Course has recently gone from having a printed program to trying to use the codes, but we still needed something printed so people could find the codes. So you, what you, I can see where you'd want something printed for like at the visitor center or to put leave at the Concord Museum to try to get tourists to know that there's another part of Concord to come to or to leave at Walden or whatever. But it doesn't have to be a big fancy brochure. It could be, and you could even do a code for the businesses, a code for the historic sites, a code for the, I don't know, flowers and restaurants, one for restaurants. It, you, you can do it, you know, any way you want, but so that you don't have that much printed paper, but you still have something that people can pick up and say, hey, you know, maybe, maybe this part of Concord's worth checking out. And yet, Keep your website stuff is what you work on to keep it up to date. And it, it could just be a, you know, a static listing or somehow or a little map or whatever. So, yeah. Mm. Have brochures been printed in the past? Yes. So a couple of years ago, um, I think Ed put together a brochure that had many different photographs of West Concord, and then it had a, an illustrated map with a list of, oh, there you go, mm -hmm. with all the businesses and things. Oh, okay. Here it is. And then inside is is a um, kind of, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what I'm showing you, but something yeah. like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then information on the backside and some pictures. Um, and then it, it folds up and then the Cultural Council bought um, clear stands that, um, I, and I've seen them on, in some of the stores. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and so there's a, a stack that people can grab. But, um, you know, I, I, I really don't know how many people like, you know, grabbing something. And um, so it's, um, you know, that's the uh, risk with a, 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 a hard copy brochure. Um, One of the trends, um, kind of based on what Sue said, is to do a rack card. So it basically looks like that it's that same shape of the brochure, but it's just two sided and it fits in the same slots as the old brochures, but it doesn't stay updated. It's got a QR code and it just kind of has like a check out West Concord and has some pictures and very impressionistic. And then it directs people to get more information elsewhere. Um, so I kind of back to Sue's thing about having people still want a little piece of paper and they have to know that they have to even know what awesome thing to look up. Um, right. And okay. Mm -hmm. So Chris, would you like to maybe connect with Ed um, and then, as you say, put together some some ideas, send them out, and then we can have a longer discussion maybe at the next meeting? Is that? I think that sounds like a good process, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, I know we have some new members, and if you feel like you would like people to work with you on it. Um, maybe, you know, we'll see if we can find some committee members to work with you. So. That. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I'll reach out to you if there's anything between now and August, um, that okay. might involve other people, but, um, let's see. Um, you know, I think there's a big question on the table, which is, um, you know, whether to do something digital or hard copy, and, right? Um, or, or maybe the intermediate one um, they were just describing with the the one sheet. Um, you know, so. Um, um, but the one sheet does sound like it would, um, you know, link out to uh, digital resources. So mm -hmm. in a way, we're we're um, we're going in that direction. Yeah. Good. 
Okay, so if if that seems good, then should we work on that for August? Yeah, uh, okay. I'll, I'll work on that with with Ed, and okay, uh, and uh, give you an update along the way, and you can weigh in on whether um, um, you know you think other people should be involved or who should be involved. Okay. Yeah, and maybe you know, particularly some of the, some of our new members can think if this is something that you would like to to work with us on. And Helene, did you have your hand up? Did I? No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Jen, po uh, poetry phone update and porch fest update. Okay, um, on uh, poetry phone update, um, Ed um, and I are final. Do I maybe just quickly explain what that is for oh, some of the people? Okay. The poetry phone is a new um, concept um, I, based on something that I saw um, in um, Granville, Ohio. A artist had created, taken a phone booth and um, repurposed it repurposed the phone booth in a very artistic, colorful way. And he had a sign on it that was called the smile phone. And I think he um, put thought of this during COVID and he um, set up the phone so that when you picked it up and you could hit the switch, you would hear inspirational recordings. So I, I saw this and, and immediately thought, I love this idea and I'd like to adapt it for West Concord and have it feature poetry. Um, and because that is an art form that is, I think, in, um, plentiful around here. We have a lot of literary people and a literary history in our town, um, but it's not something that we've really featured yet. And at least in my experience on, the, on this um, cultural committee. So um, we uh, have started, I'm working with Ed who likes to build and make things, um, have been um, brainstorming about how to create a, a poetry phone that we would create. Um, it's probably gonna be a phone booth, maybe English style, and that would um, be placed. Um, we're hoping that Bruce Freeman Rail Trail will give us permission to place the phone on the bridge over Neshoba Brook off the rail trail. It's quiet. It's a re, you know, a good place to look at the water and listen to poetry. Um, the phone would feature say like five different poems um, each season. We would change them seasonally. Um, the poems would be um, selected and, and this is an update for the whole committee. Originally, we were thinking that we would have a little subcommittee. It would solicit, this group would solicit poetry. We would vet, we would pick poems. And then I realized, wait a minute, that's a kind of duplicating work that's already happening all across town. There are a lot of really, what I've learned, there are a lot of poetry projects um, and you might be aware of them at, the, at all of the schools, at the library for adults, for kids. Um, Gaining Ground is a poetry project each year. Um, the Concord Prison has a um, poetry and writing um, program. There are lots of different poetry programs, so we don't want to reinvent the wheel. What I think would make sense for us is to um, solicit from each of these organizations their nominations for their poem to be featured from their group um, on, on our phone. And so, um, you know, imagine in the fall, there would be a set of five poems and and there would be a menu so that you could see who, you know, who, who the poems were by and where they were coming from. Um, the poems will be re recorded, could be recorded by the poet themselves or someone else. We're gonna figure that part out. Um, we've got a couple of different recording engineers um, who are possible who are um, available to us the um, this will be powered by solar um, by a solar charge battery system this is what the artist in Ohio used and he is um, has already spent some time with Ed on the phone telling explaining how to do that how to make that part of it um, so I think that's basically the idea um, uh, and 
Um, we are finalizing this week, I hope, um, the budget and the proposal to Bruce Freeman Rail Trail um, for extra, for both for placement on the rail trail, as I said, as well as some extra funding. We have $2,800 from our MCC grant to apply to this. I think we're gonna come out a little bit more like 3,800, 4,000. So that will be great if we can get um, Bruce Freeman money. Um, what else to tell you? Oh, looking for um, a couple of volunteers who would want to work um, with me on um, both promoting um, the poetry phone when there is new when there are new poems you know we want to get out the word that the fall poems are on the phone and maybe some press and stories about what poems are featured as well as um, being like a point person to the various organizations in town and you know, getting them to send us and nominate whatever poems they want for that particular season selection so it should be fun it, I don't think it'll be great heavy lifting. Um, and um, the idea is that if we can keep to the schedule that we had laid out, they would like to do the unveiling of this phone in October. The other important thing to say is that we're constructing this phone um, to last three years. This is not a forever thing. I think um, we will we will install this and support it and maintain it for three years. And then we'll revisit at the end of three years, whether or not this is something we should, um, that we want to continue or not. Great. Any, so Jenna, any I, think it's a, well, I think it's a great idea. I'm really glad to hear that um, you're thinking about just doing it for the three years, because one of my concerns has been the ongoing maintenance. Um, of the booth, it's, it's very different than what we've done in the past, where there are murals that really don't require, they're, they're not handled by people, they're right. not, you know, um, it's, this is a very different kind of thing. And the, the only thing that concerned me is the maintenance of it. Who's gonna be responsible for that? What happens if it gets damaged? Um, just, you know, all kinds of yeah. incidents. Sure. I think we need to, you know, cross our T's and dot our I's and make sure all of that is in place before, you know, moving forward. Um, but having a yeah. three-year term for it, I think, is very helpful so we can revisit it and actually see, because we have no idea what's going to happen. It may be that there's no maintenance involved in it, or there may yeah, be... Yeah, exactly. There, there are some unknowns. Yeah storms, you know, weather will happen. Um, and I am committed to, and, you know, with, with, I think Ed and I will both, we're both willing to check in on the phone on a regular basis. And particularly after weather events, we will probably, you know, need to reposition our, our solar um, battery position um, with the seasons and things like that. Um, and, and of course, Four times a year, we will update um, the poems that are featured as well. Yeah, we'll see. There are some unknowns about it. Right, right. But it's a great idea. I think it's really innovative and um, I think can open people who have not been into poetry at all. It can, you know, expose them to it. So all of that, I think, is great. My only concerns have been around maintenance um, and the fact that we don't have anything else that requires any sort of maintenance or has any physical kind of contact on a regular basis. Right, um, right, you know. exactly. Um, I, so looking for, for two people who might want to be involved in, in helping make this happen. So I'm not putting you on the spot now, but if anybody wants, uh, if you're interested, let me know. So Jen, can you um, refresh our memories so that the um, tasks that you would need someone to help you with is the co connectivity to other organizations and right to contact organizations, asking them, you know, following up to get um, their nomination by a certain date. And the second piece 
this would be just to help and um and we would have to figure out what kind of promotional plan would support it but getting information into the bridge maybe a story into the bridge um on um community websites figuring out face you know using social media um getting the word out that you know the fall poems are are now available on the phone or spring poems are ready um how we would support that just you know uh, just so that people know to go and check them out. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that piece. I, I always like writing things up. Great. Thanks, Chris. And I can probably help on the connection side, the emailing side, but I just don't know the, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that information is someplace. <laughs> sure, we can, we'll, we'll, we can figure that out in terms of the organizations to mm -hmm. reach out to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. And do you want to update us on Porch Fest? Yes. So Porch Fest, here is where we are. We have to date, um, hold on, just getting my notes. All right. We've confirmed to date, we've got 21 homes um, and two more pending. We're expanding into um, three town locations. This is a first time that we are going to move things into the business area a little bit more. This is assuming we get approval from the town. I've submitted um, um, whatever the application was to utilize the tea cakes um, plaza, the patio area, and the junction park. Um, in the junction park, the little carve out area as places where musicians can play each of those spots as well as Deborah's Alley. Adam is totally on board. He's wanted us to do this for a long time. So we have those three locations plus the Thoreau School front, um, the porch area that where the overhang um, will be a new sort of, you know, out of the um, house um, model and into um, a different kind of setting, but I think they will work really well. Um, Chris is also on this committee. Helene is too on the Portress Committee. And as I run through these notes, if you want to add anything, please feel free to. Um, we've got now we've got 53 bands and musicians and bands that are on board. Last year we had 34. So this is a big increase. Um, the acoustic village area is going to be on Highland Street. So if some of you remember, we had some noise bleed from the really big bands that were bleeding into some of the acoustic areas. Um, so this year we're trying to put the acoustic musicians all um, in the Highland Street area, which I think will make a big difference. Um, it there has we're not accepting any more applications for bands, so. Um, Jen, I think Jen Mopbach cut that off on June 4th. Well, what else? So we've got 10 volunteers on our Porch Fest team, um, two of which are here, um, three of us, I guess, in total. If anyone, any the new Sues are interested in participating, let me know. Um, we'd love to have you. I think there will be plenty of um, opportunities to be helpful. Um, we meet the the porch fest team meets sorry that's my dog <clears throat> um bi-weekly tuesday nights at seven o'clock um so i don't think it, it's collided with this meeting but um for we do like half hour quick efficient check-ins just um everybody's taking a little piece of it um and i think it's going to make it um very doable um with that with that team Anything else that I skipped over, Helene or Chris? I can also tell you that um, there was, I guess I didn't hear about this. There was a dog incident last year. And so somebody in the group is looking into making um, into a, a policy um, because that one of the hosts was concerned about liability and safety after a per, uh, somebody was bitten by a dog who was who was on a leash. Um, that was actually a couple of years ago. That wasn't recent. 
we have additional signs are being printed, stickers that are going to update because um, we reuse our signs, but stickers to update. Um, and they'll be ready to distribute in August. And the committee, I understand, remember, I missed the last meeting, but um, Chris or Helene might know the committee is starting to look into food trucks Ooh. for the Harvey Wheeler hub area. Right, food trucks and also vendors, um, you know, local vendors. I'm gonna be helping out with uh, soliciting some of those. That's great, Helene. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, Jen, just a provisional yes from Eric and Amy Adams. So um, they just need to check family plans. So maybe you can up your, well, I All don't right. know. So to 22. Maybe, maybe, to 22 provisional uh provisional. Provisional 22. does jen mopak know about this yet or should i let her know yeah let her let her know okay good to hear okay hey anything else on porch fest i think that's it okay and so now um, Helene had a fabulous idea about painted and decorative decorated signal boxes. And Mimi, if you could let me share, I have uh, we have a PowerPoint. Can I just share, or do you need to help me? Uh, let me see in case I do. Let's see. Yeah, you should be able to share now. Okay. Great. Good. So my hey, proposal, um, I don't know if you've driven around to other neighboring towns, but many of them have signal boxes, which are the boxes that are near the traffic lights, um, that control the traffic lights, and they've been decorated so that they're not plain green or gray or graffitied or whatever. Um, and many of our local neighbors, like Bedford, Maynard, Belmont, Wellesley, Lexington have these kinds of um, painted signal boxes. And there's a couple of examples of them. I think, Carolyn, if you could scroll through. There's one for Bedford. Um, that's Wellesley, I believe. But they're different kinds of, of decorations. I kind of drive through these towns and think, gee, I wish we could do this in West Concord. And I think they really would support the murals and you know, just be a funky kind of thing that we could do here in West Concord. So before bringing it to the committee, I decided that I would try to explore this um, through Public Works and I contacted Alan Cathcart um, to see if this might be feasible. And he feels that it would certainly be something that would be doable for us to actually do. Um, currently, there is no policy that he could find that would cover um, doing these painted or decorated signal boxes. So he would like for me to explore this with some other towns, come up with um, a possible policy if the committee feels that this is something that we'd want to move forward with. Um, so I did start looking a little bit and Wellesley does an interesting thing. And I think um, you might have that, Carolyn, if you could. Yep. Okay, so Wellesley has a traffic, what they call a traffic box art program. Um, and I was really intrigued by the way that they handled. Can everybody see this all right on your screens? Um, what they do is they actually solicit the public, whether you be a professional artist or an amateur artist or a student or whatever, um, they have sort of a program where you can apply to paint one of the boxes. Um, and there's a $1,000 grant to do this. Wellesley, we would not even have to reinvent the wheel if we decided to do something like this because Wellesley has a program where they've really outlined um, specifically what needs to be done in terms of submitting your proposals, what kind of paint to use, the kind of paint that you know, wouldn't fade and you know, all this other business. It really is, is quite complete. And I think that we could use this as a template for our program if we decided to go through with it. 
Um, and what we would, what I would foresee is that we as a committee would get these various um, proposals in from people who have, you know, filled out the um, online application or physical application. And we could go through and see which ones we might want to choose to have our signal boxes painted. There are only three signal boxes in West Concord in the district. So it was, it is not a big onerous project. Um, but I kind of foresee maybe some high school students wanting to do a box and somebody else wanting to do a box and just coming up with some really nice, interesting um, decorations for these boxes that I think are pretty ugly right now. So that's my proposal. Any thoughts on that? I love this idea. This is fantastic. I think it's great too. Yeah. And so would Helene, would you um, offer a thousand dollars to um, um, groups that would be applying? Is that a a, a necessary um, step? I don't have any reason not to, but I'm just curious whether. Well, that would be that would cover the cost because they would be responsible for getting the paint, um, coming up with a proposal for you know what their project would be their time um, that they would be using to actually do the painting so it's sort of a stipend I, I would see it as a stipend I think that that's how they view it in Wellesley as well is that that is going to cover their costs plus the time that it might take um, for them to actually prepare this and, and execute it um, and it would be I would foresee doing something similar to Wellesley in terms of having the application process end um, by the by April. And then I would foresee this happening during the summer when the weather is conducive for them to be able to paint these boxes um, and have it completed by August or, or whenever. Would this project um, be a good candidate for the grant that we just spoke about at the beginning of the meeting? Since it's I'm not sure we could get that together in a day because oh, okay. what I need to do is I need to get back to Alan oh. um, and discuss this with their department, come up with a policy because again, mm. you know, who's going to be responsible for maintaining this? Is there a copyright on the artwork that, you know, people are actually doing? I believe in Wellesley, they are sort of copyrighted to the particular artist and the artist can sign the box. Um, it's a way for them to get publicity as well if they're a professional artist um, and or you know if you're an amateur you want to be able to sign your product that type of thing. So this is just the beginning step of it and I certainly cannot get this done in a day. Um, <laughs> but my next step would be to contact Alan again, get together with his department um, and see if we can come up with a policy to do this, you know, there's, you have to be mindful of the fact that we've got, you know, people who are <clears throat> on public property and, you know, if somebody gets injured or, you know, all those kinds of details need to be worked out. Yeah. But I didn't want to go ahead and do anything until um, this was approved by the committee. If people on the committee feel this is a worthwhile project to do and um and then we can go ahead with it and i don't foresee this happening until next spring you know we would put out the proposals we as a complete committee can go through the various um applications and decide what fits with west concord we might come up with a theme that we might want um, for these boxes or not you know i haven't thought that part through yet, but I think that's something that we would need to discuss as a committee. You know, what do we want? Is there an industrial theme again that we want or, or something else, um, you know, whatever. So this would not happen until next year. And actually, I think given that you are thinking of next spring, this would be perfect for the $15,000 MCC grant. Right. Because that's about when the those funds would be coming in. Right, and it would be a maximum of 3,000. Now, the other thing is 
Um, I don't know if the Public Works Department would allow us to do all of those boxes. Alan hasn't gotten to that point yet. Um, he was going to take a look at the boxes and make sure that you know they would be appropriate for us to, to decorate. But again, there's only three of them. Um, one of which potentially, I think the one that's near the Fowler Library might be in the historic district for West Concord. And I don't know if we would need permission from the historic districts commission for that. That's again, something I'd need to explore. Um, but at the maximum, there's three boxes that would be done. So the maximum we would need if we decided to do a $1,000 stipend for each box would be $3,000. Pauline, how, um, when did Wellesley start this? How long do these painting oh, boxes um, hold up for? I think, I think they've been doing them at least, they've been, they have a lot of boxes, I guess, in Wellesley. And so they do several each year. I would have to look that up again, but I'm guessing it's been at least five years that they've done it. Yeah. And they do a certain number of boxes each year. And do they need to do maintenance on them or do they, does the- Well, what they've done is they've, they've, they've really researched the, the right type of paint to use that really holds up on them. Um, and so I think that that's, but that's again, another thing that um, right. we would have to explore would be the maintenance and, or do we want to change them occasionally? You know, do you want the same one for 10 years or do you want to, you know, you can easily paint over it and, you know, do another different design. So I, I had done um, mural agreements for um, other communities. Um, so these kind of are like mini murals. So I've been actually looking at uh, drafting some of these for Concord, recognizing oh, some of the murals that we did didn't some really didn't have maintenance agreements or licenses and things like that. So um, I can share that with you, Helene, and, and you can kind of see some models of that. Um, and I have been checking with some of the staff here about um, you know having it vetted through the um, various town departments around indemnification and, and copyright and things like that. Um, so uh, I can work on that part with, a bit with you. Great, thank you so much, Mimi, that would be wonderful. Any, any other thoughts? So is this something that we'd like Helene to explore? Yes. Okay. I, Helene, I think you got the cans. thumbs up. Can, you sorry? Trash, can we do trash cans too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's okay, so I think you've got there. the thumbs up. Okay. All right. So I, um, will, I will plan to contact Alan and get this ball rolling. Great. Good. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so I just had one one more question for August 1st. Would you all like to be Zoom or would you like to be live? If you're if we're live, we would be at the Harvey Wheeler Center. I personally would like live, particularly since we have several new members and sometimes it's nice to connect physically um, rather than on Zoom. My okay. own personal feeling. I don't know how everyone That'd be else. preferable for me as a new member too, just to meet face to face. Yes. Okay. So is that is that good for everybody that August first will be live? Great. I, think I assume this air conditioning at Harvey Wheeler. I'm already <laughs> worried about getting there too is, hot in the summer. Yeah. yeah. Can't, I can't guarantee it, but I mean they they have programs in there, so I would assume so. Yeah. If not, we'll bring fans and <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? I do have one question. Um, if was there, I, I feel like we should have done some sort of goodbye. Thank you for um, Kate Yoder. And that didn't really happen. I just wondered if maybe, maybe in August before the meeting, we could do something. Sure. Um, what what sort of did you have thoughts of what you would like us to do? Um, I haven't thought about that part. I just was thinking, okay. feeling a little bit badly that it was like, OK, goodbye. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK. But, well, why yeah. don't I invite her and then we can think of what. Yeah. What we could do. 
Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Any other thoughts? Sue, Sue L at the next meeting, would you like to maybe um, talk a little bit more about some of your good ideas that you brought up at this meeting? Oh, which is, <laughs> sure. Okay. So I'll put that as an agenda item. Okay. Okay. Any, anything else? Okay, well, thank you everybody for coming and we will see you all in August and thank you all for your fabulous work. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Jennifer, I'd be yes. happy to work on Porch Fest even as a volunteer, so. Oh, great, Sue. Okay, I will send um, you the info about the next Tuesday night meeting. Great. Okay, thanks. Okay. And Carolyn, now if I if I do want to join the committee, I signed out. I filled out that volunteer thing. What's my next move here? Well, great. Yeah. So filling out the green card is your next move. Okay, I did that. Okay, great. And then uh, the town will notify various. Um, will notify Mimi and also Mary Hartman, who is our select person, and the select person will probably be in touch with you, just oh, to. Okay just to chat and then um, you'll be nominated at a selectman's meeting. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to attend. All right. Yeah. All right, super. Well, it was very nice to attend and um, I think this could be really be a lot of fun. I look forward to it. Oh, good. Wonderful. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.